Hello, and welcome to this edition of Lift Every Voice. Lift Every Voice is a program of the Louisville Branch NAACP in which we seek to keep our community informed as to the issues that affect us, inform you about what is taking place within the NAACP, what issues the NAACP sees in our community, as well as providing you advice in terms of things that you ought to do and should be doing. The mission of the NAACP is to ensure the educational, economic, and civil rights of every individual. So our focus is always on doing what we can to make certain that our community is well served. We've been on hiatus for last month, and so for this program, I'd like to bring you an update on what the NAACP has been doing. I said that the mission involved education, civil rights, and economic development. So let's talk about education and what has the NAACP been doing with education over the past month. In July, we issued over $74,000 in scholarships to students here in Louisville and Jefferson County. These scholarships will allow students to attend their university to finish their education, and in some instances to begin their education. So we provided not only scholarship for undergraduate students in, in, in their endeavor to seek a higher education, but also for graduate students. To, for the NAACP Louisville branch to have given away over $74,000 represents a major commitment by this branch to our students. Students who have won scholarships this year will be attending Western Kentucky University. Eastern Kentucky University, the University of Louisville, the University of Kentucky, Murray State, Spalding University, Bellarmine, Center College, Transylvania, JCTC, the University of Illinois, Mississippi State, Emory University, American University, Hampton, Morehouse, Alcorn State, Howard, Spelman, and of course, Kentucky State University. So those are the undergraduate students. We also awarded graduate scholarships. And for graduate students, these are for students who are in either graduate school or in professional school. These students will be going to the University of Kentucky, the University of Louisville, and the University of Cincinnati. And in all of those instances, those students are in medical school and they are future doctors. And the way in which we provide the scholarships for our students is tied and located with the contributions that we receive from several different organizations across the community who are in fact help us to support that. We have two endowed scholarship programs that, are, that the NAACP has, was fortunate enough to be the recipient and beneficiary of and to be able to provide. We have the Sloan C. Worthington Scholarship, Levi Alexander Scholarship, Martin Automotive Group Scholarship, Kaufman and Kaufman, and the McDonald Restaurants of, of Kentuckiana. And we also have a scholarship program named after the Marshall family. For those individuals who are aware of, of the Marshall family know that there are educators in our community who have made contribution and continue to make contribution to us. If you're interested in the scholarship in terms of applying for scholarship, you can get the application on the NA, Louisville Branch NAACP website. If you're also interested in contributing to the scholarship program, you can in fact get that by calling our office at 502-776-7608 or by emailing the Louisville branch at louisvillebranch at lounaacp.org. We're very much interested in terms of making a real difference in our community and helping students learn and achieve because one of the criteria that we ask of those who receive our scholarship is that they make a commitment to return to the community and make a real difference. And so that is what we're all about. And that's the education arena. But also in education arena, we also are involved with JCPS, our public school system here in Jefferson County. JCPS in the, in the recent weeks has come under attack, come under attack by individuals who, in my opinion, and in the opinion of the NAACP, does not have the best interests of all students in the system, and particularly our students. We're particularly concerned about those parents who have shown up at school board meetings and been disruptive in terms of what has taken place in the school board meeting. Having not gotten their way, they choose to be disruptive. What are they concerned about? They're concerned about masks for students in classrooms. They're concerned, at least that's, that is their stated concern, but what we all know that we're in a, a fight for our lives as it relates to this coronavirus. And what we expect and want from JCPS is to make certain that all of our students, all of our children are in fact safe 
And we do believe that JCPS has been able to do that. But also while we were on hiatus, a, a great thing happened with JCPS, and that is that the Reverend Daniel Corey Show was elected vice chair of the JCPS school board. So our hats off there to Reverend Show for his election to that office and his moving forward, because having him there sitting in the chair next to our board chair, Diane Porter, we can hopefully make some real things, some real meaningful things take place. Those individuals who have complained about our community and complained about our schools also have been on JCPS in terms of attacking the courses JCPS has and offers that teaches to our kids and to all kids the history of the African-Americans in this country and the true history of America. And what they have done is confuse a, a, a theory, which is critical race theory, with what JCPS is teaching. JCPS does not teach critical race theory. Critical race theory is a, a theory and a, a, and, a, and a methodology of how one does analysis of the impact of things that have occurred in this country that places us where we are in the current day environment. That is what critical race theory is. JCPS is not teaching that. JCPS is teaching to our kids that their history is important that they made major contributions to our community and to our society, and that they continue to do so. When we know our history, we are able to appreciate it, value it more, and achieve more in terms of where we are. And that has happened. All you have to do is look at the Du Bois Academy, which has a curriculum is different from the curriculum in other JCPS schools. That curriculum has in fact caused the young men enrolled in, in, in Du Bois Academy to rise up and to excel and to do well. Their academic performance is at the top level and we're going much higher in terms of going into the future. So we're gonna make certain that those kids and young men are always taken care of. JCPS is doing a good job, but also understand that from the NAACP standpoint is that we want JCPS not only to do a good job, but we want JCS to be accountable accountable to you, the community, accountable to us in terms of our expectation and to make certain that things really happen. One I, I, instance of their accountability is they finally renovated the third floor of Shawnee High School. For more than three decades, that floor was in fact closed off and not available to be used. And this school year, when the schools opened a few weeks ago, that floor opened up and we're to be elated and congratulate JCPS in terms of being that. In addition to education, the Louisville Branch NAACP is involved in civil rights and voting rights. Civil rights and voting rights. And let me talk about voting rights in particular because there has been a national push by, and I will say Republicans and primarily white Republicans to limit and suppress voting rights. The actions which, which spurred voter turnout in, in, in the 2020 election, those things that were done, early voting, absentee voting, those things that drove record turnouts in the election are the things in which these groups are now gone after in terms of being able to, to, to change and limit voting rights. As I sit here and talk to you today, 19 states have enacted 31 laws to reset, restrict access to the vote. And, and when you look across the country, over 400 bills with provisions to restrict voting access have been introduced in 49 states and Kentucky is among them. People have tried to say that Kentucky made a great deal of progress in terms of what it did in it, with last legislative se session in terms of allowing more opportunities to voting. When it is really analyzed and looked at, the things that Kentucky's allowed in the 2020 election, most, if not any, all of those were in fact taken away or severely limited. So when we talk about voter suppression, Kentucky is, in, is, is among those groups and states which is doing that and doing it on a regular basis. And we have to be very, very careful and critical of making certain that we protect voting rights. You know, John Lewis coming across the Edmund Pettus Bridge was marching for voting rights. John Lewis for his entire life was always advocating for voting rights. We need to make certain that we're fighting for the rights for everybody in terms of what is taking place. Governor Bashir, 
last year restored voting rights to over 160,000 farmer offenders. There was 160,000 people who became eligible to vote, registered to vote in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I'm ashamed to admit that today, only one in four of those individuals, less than 25% of them, registered and voted in the 2020 election. When the doors of opportunity are open to us, we need to make certain that those opportunities are, t are taken, are, are addressed, and that we in fact take advantage of what is given to us. So as NAACP, we are always involved in voter registration. We ramp up big time when it's the voting season or election season. But what I want to say to you today is we need to do more on voter registration in and out of the election season. If you look at what Stacey Abrams was able to do in Atlanta over the last four years in terms of registering voters, she registered voters not when just when Georgia was having an election, but in the off season when Georgia was not having an election. We need to do the same thing here in Kentucky to make an all out effort to make certain that every single individual is in fact registered. I talk about Kentucky, but our focus is on Louisville and Jefferson County. We want to make certain that every reg every voter who is eligible to vote not only registers to vote, but that he or she also votes when the election comes up. And so we're going to be undertaking an effort to drive voter registration everywhere that we can. And we need to make certain that that is done. But while we're working on driving voter registration, you also need to be aware that Secretary of State Michael Adams is purging the voting rolls in Kentucky. He's been doing it on a regular basis since he went into office, and we need to make certain that we are checking our voter registration to make certain that they're current and that we're able to vote. You know, the only way we defeat what they're doing is to us to have a concentrated effort directed at making certain that each and every individual that we know who is eligible to vote is registered to vote and that that individual takes off. The United States House of Representatives has adopted two bills, H.R. 1, which is called for the People's Act, and, to, and that's to make voting more uniform across the country, and H.R. 4, the John R. Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. H.R. 1 is directed at making voting uniform across the country. So we won't have outliers like we have in Florida, like we have in Georgia, and like we have in Texas. As you looked at what has taken place in those states, they have made some drastic changes in terms of who can vote, when they can vote, where they can vote, how they can vote. You know, voting should be a fundamental right. And that's what H.R. 1 seeks to do in terms of, of, of it. H.R. 4, the John R. Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, is designed to restore the sections of the Voting Rights Act that were invalidated by the U.S. Supreme Court. Restoring those provisions of the Voting Rights Act, had they been in effect, would not have allowed Georgia, Florida, and all these other states to do what they have done as it relates to voting rights. Had it been in effect, it would not have occurred. And we need to make certain that now that these two bills have passed out of the U.S. United States House of Representatives, that they pass out of the United States Senate. And that's where Kentucky plays a pivotal role. Senator Mitch McConnell, which is the minority leader of the Senate, sits in a critical role in regards to allowing that bill, those bills to in fact be voted out of the Senate. We need to make certain and say to McConnell in loud and clear and unequivocal terms, we want to see H.R. 1 and H.R. 4 passed by the United States Senate, which means that you, Senator McConnell, need to make certain that you protect the rights of all citizens, and particularly citizens who look like me. We need to make certain that that takes place. You need to take your knee off of our neck and allow those bills to in fact pass out of the Senate. It is now on you, Senator McConnell, and with some help from Rand Paul, to make certain that that takes place. And you can do that in one of two ways. You can do that by ensuring that there are more than 60 votes for these bills, or you can agree that the filibuster, which has been a hindrance to a lot of legislation, will not apply to these two bills. 
We, the Louisville branch NAACP, is calling on you, Senator McConnell, to do that. And we're calling on all of our memberships, all of our listeners and viewers who are watching this program to, in fact, engage in that to make certain that those things, those bills do, in fact, take place. The Louisville branch NAACP, as you can see, you can hear from what I've been sharing with you today, is very, very active in a variety of issues, constantly doing things, and many times in the shadows. Most folks do not know some of the things that we do but we're engaged. So when I talk about voting rights, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Senator McConnell was giving a speech in Louisville. The NAACP was demonstrating at the site of the speech with signs and with individuals. Senator saw us there in person, did not acknowledge our existence nor speak to us, but he's done that for a number of years, but we were there. And I know even though he didn't acknowledge, he heard us and he knew what we were all about. So we are, in fact, encouraging people that wherever McConnell shows up to demonstrate, demonstrate to him that we're tired and sick and tired of the way in which things have been handled, how they've gone on in the past. And we need to do more and we need to do more now. And we can only do that when we have a senator or a senator in leadership who is a representative of all of the people, not special interests, but of all of the people we the NAACP and our memberships, our voters and citizens of the Commonwealth and of these United States. And we're entitled, based on what the Constitution says, to all of the rights that, that, are, in, that are enshrined in those words and in those documents. So that means that Senator McConnell, you need to come to, come to grips with the fact that we're expecting change, looking for change from you. The NAACP is also involved in, in a matter that's going to be very, very important in the coming weeks and months. As we all know, the census was, took place in 2020. The results of the census are now back. And so redistricting will begin for representatives in, in the, uh, for the U.S. representatives from Kentucky, the senators from Kentucky, all elected officials, school board districts, and all the, the lines for all of those, Metro Council, the lines for all of those will be redrawn by various bodies in the coming weeks and months. And we need to make certain that the lines as drawn are in fact fair lines. And there is a whole campaign around what we call fair maps, meaning that the, that the lines are drawn to make certain that representative government takes place. Let me give you an example of something that could happen and that we need to be very well aware of. As you know, John Yarmouth represents the third congressional district. He is the only Democrat among the federal or national federal elected officials in the Commonwealth from the Commonwealth of Kentucky. His district covers really Metro Louisville and the Republican House, the Republican legislature in Frankfurt is responsible and will be responsible for drawing the line of Representative Yarmouth district. The expectation is, or at least the worry is, is that those individuals in Frankfurt will attempt to draw the lines in such a way so as to affect and impact the ability of a representative like John Yarmouth to be elected out of Louisville. We need to make certain that that doesn't happen. We need to make certain that people understand and that we show up at these redistricting committees meetings. We need to make certain that we review the maps as they come out. And more than that, we need to start having input into what those maps will look like to make certain that we are in fact able to do that. You know, the legislative district, the state legislative district in, in, in Louisville are drawn so that we have three members in the Kentucky House and one African-American Senator. When you look at the, the population across Kentucky, the fact that we can draw districts in, in Louisville that ensures that African-Americans are elected to the state house and to the legislature, we also should have that right to elect people across the state and across the Commonwealth in other cities and counties there. So what we're working for and we're asking you to work with us is to advocate for fair maps, to make certain that we end up with districts that are representative, that gives us the ability to in fact elect representative who represent our interests. 
And that means that, you know, may not necessarily be a district in which there's a majority African-American voters, but they can draw a district that is major is African-American influence. What did I mean by that? We may not make up the majority in that district, but we can be the influence to be able to make certain that individuals who are elected come from who represent our interests. That's what we're all about, fighting every day to make certain that we care and take care of and protect the individuals and protect our community. That's what the NAACP is all about. And what we're asking from you is that you, the community, you, the viewer, join us in this fight. You, how, and you ask the question, how do you join us in this fight? Number one, you can join us by a membership. Become a member of the NAACP. And you can do that by, by going to our website, which is at lounaacp.org or emailing us at louisvillebranch at lounaacp.org indicating that you want to join and you want to be involved. And on that website, you, you get there are members, you can go to a membership and sign up for membership there. But as important as your membership is, your active involvement and engagement in the fight in which we're involved is even more important. We need you to show up and show out when we call your attention to an issue. We need you to be involved and let your voice be heard. We need you to engage with us in holding accountable those individuals who have direct authority to impact our community. We need you as individuals to be involved with us to make us do the things that we can, we can do. And, and the way you get in contact with NAACP, as I said earlier, you can email us at louisvillebranch at lounaacp.org. Call in our office at 502-776-7608. Visit our website at lounaacp.org or visit our Facebook page, which is, is at Louisville NAACP. And of course, you can do the old fashioned way, and that is you can visit us at our offices, which are located at 1245 Catapult Court. The NAACP is interested in making certain that every citizen has an opportunity to live a full and complete life and rise to the highest level of opportunities available for him or her. And we do that every day through the work that we undertake. And we're asking you to be with us, work with us, come and go along with us as we do this. And when we all work together, we're able to be able to lift every voice and in lifting every voice, lift everyone who looks like you and I. So on behalf of the Louisville Branch NAACP, we ask you to continue to be engaged with us and look for us often on a regular basis on SSC Live TV as we bring to you information, current information in our community where you can get actively involved and make a real difference. Thank you.